thank y'all for being patient with us as we were finishing up our meeting. Say patience is a virtue, it's a good one to have. Sometimes we have to practice it, but we were talking and discussing and um, we knew that we were running late, and, but that was all right. Um, I want us to look real quick. I've got a, a lesson for tonight, but it's not a very long lesson. It's actually a, probably a lesson we can get finished in the amount of time that we have left, because um, I know we've got a business meeting uh, right after this, and Brother Stan, you have a choir practice after that. So if you sing in the choir, please be sure to stay for that because they are practicing for Easter, which is right around the corner. Um, but I want us to start out in the book of Genesis chapter 1. We're going to start at the very beginning. Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 through 28. Genesis chapter 1 starting with verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. You see, God's initial plan for mankind from the very beginning, was to be fruitful and was to multiply. That's what we've been talking about with discipleship, that disciples make disciples. And God's plan wasn't just talking about having little babies, but he was talking about spiritually multiplying also because they would raise their children, their babies, up to know the true and the living God, Yahweh. Okay, So it goes beyond just multiplying in the sense of reproducing but it's also talking about spiritual reproduction. And that was the plan from the very beginning, but we see something happened in Genesis chapter 3. Anybody know what takes place in Genesis chapter 3? The fall of mankind, sin entered in. Sin entered in. But God had a plan because of his love that years later he sent his son Jesus Christ to pay an atonement for that sin. Now I want us to jump forward to the New Testament in just a moment, but I wanted to start in the beginning in Genesis to see that God's plan was for us to multiply. That's the same plan he has for us in the New Testament age. That's the same plan he has for us today. At Mount Zion, that's the same plan he has for us as individuals. First thing Jesus did when he started his ministry is he called people to follow him. To follow him. Look in Luke chapter 5, verse 10. Luke 5.10. Now here we see Simon who's been out fishing. We know he was a fisherman. What's Jesus do? Tells them to watch out in the deep, let down their nets, and they get a big catch of fish. Look at verse 10. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. What is Jesus talking about when it comes to catching men? He uses a, a term, fishers of men, in the scriptures. In Mark chapter 1, verse 17, Jesus said, Come after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Of men. When Jesus Christ started his public ministry on earth, he called 
people to be his disciples and to multiply and to make disciples of others. Won't you pay attention in Mark chapter 1 verse 17. You can turn there if you want to or just write it down. But Jesus said, come after me and I will make you to become fishers of men. You see, Jesus is bringing about change where the individual becomes something else. The individual becomes one that becomes a fisher of men, as Christ calls them. So what does this look like? We also see that this given in the Great Commission. Where God tells us to go, therefore, to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to adhere to the things which I have spoken, and lo, he will be with us always, even unto the end of the age. We see that great commission expounded upon further in Acts chapter 1, verses 8 through 9, where we are told that we will receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon us, and we will be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the world. And then Jesus was taken up in a cloud. You see, as Jesus calls us to be fishers of men, he doesn't just leave us wondering what to do. He gives us a guide that shows us, that tells us. And that guide is his Holy Spirit. He calls us to be fishers, but he'll teach us to fish if we let him. Why do you think Jesus used the example of fishing to portray this principle of multiplication, disciples making disciples? Why do you think he chose to use this parable, if you will? It was their life. They could relate to it. They understood it. Just like you and I can understand it today. Who in here has never been fishing? We all have. You haven't been? Well, you can come to my house sometime. We'll go fishing, baby. <laughs> So everybody else has been fishing so we can relate to it, right? Jeff, you need to bring her fishing sometime. <laughs> Fishers of men, they could relate to it. They could understand what Jesus was talking about. He was talking on their level, but he wasn't just talking about physically fishing for fish. He was talking about fishing for people. He was talking about a spiritual harvest. Just as they had been catching fish in the natural physical world, Jesus was going to teach them to catch fish spiritually. Okay. Now I want us to talk about a few principles that go along with this idea of fishing. If you're going to go fishing and you're going to be successful, what do you got to do first off? You got to go where the fish are. Miss Martha, can you catch a fish out there in that parking lot? Fish is in the water, right? So we got to go where the fish are. Well, let's think about this from a spiritual perspective. If we are called to be fishers of men, we've got to go to where the fish are, right? And they're out in the world. So we've got to go out in the world to reach them. We've got to look at ways to effectively do that, to be fishers of men. We've also got to analyze the environment. Think about this. You go and fishing. You need to know how deep the water is, where you're gonna fish at. Otherwise, you ain't gonna set your line right when you throw your hook out there, right? You need to know if it's salt water, if it's fresh water, so you know what kind of fish you're fishing for. You need to know which way the wind's blowing, why? Because if you're trying to throw out over here where you know there's fish and you, you throw and the wind catches it and you end up over there, guess what, you ain't gonna be effective either, okay? These factors, these natural things, determine the methods that we have to use to be effective at catching fish. That's true in the natural world. It makes perfect sense to us. You've got to have the bait designed for the type of fish. If I'm going to catch catfish, I give me some catfish charlie or some chicken livers. Right? If I'm going to catch bass, I get a lure or a plastic worm. If I want brim, do I use that big old plastic worm? No, it ain't going to fit in the mouth. It ain't going to bite it. Get your little wiggler or a cricket. I think Miss Deborah said cricket. They're cleaner than wigglers. You got the right bait. You, you've evaluated where the fish are. You know where they're at. You, you designed the bait to be able to reach them. We must look at the environment. So how do we do that with people? We ask ourselves, what are the needs of the people 
that God is calling us to reach? What is the needs of the people that God is calling us to reach? What is happening in their lives? Are we connected to people enough that we can even know that? What is going on in the environment? And see, that kind of gives us an idea of what methods we need to use to reach them. Jesus did that in John chapter 4 when he met the woman at the well. He saw that that woman was thirsty. <laughs> that she needed water. But Jesus says, the water I offer you is living water. He was very effective in analyzing the environment. He went to where the fish was and guess what? He had a catch. He had a catch. We must learn to do the same thing. If we aren't analyzing the environment, seeing what the needs of people are, connecting with them, seeing what's happening in their lives, it's kind of like me going and trying to catch a freshwater catfish in the middle of the ocean. It ain't never going to work. Because freshwater catfish don't live in the middle of the ocean in the salt water. My bait and everything's the wrong. Not going to be effective. Sometimes when we're fishing, we've got to use different methods. I'm out there trying to catch that brim, and Miss Deborah's brought some crickets, and we're throwing crickets out there, and them brims ain't biting it. But guess what? I brought some wigglers, too. So I put one of them on the hook, and guess what happens? That fish likes that. So it bites that. It makes perfect sense. What about the spiritual perspective? People like different stuff. People are attracted by different stuff. We've got to be willing to use different stuff to reach people. Whatever that different stuff is, wherever God leads us. It may look different than the bait that we've used before. And that's okay. As long as God is leading us to do it. As long as we see the need of the fish and we've analyzed the environment where God is sending us to serve and the environment where God's sending us to serve is right here in this community. That's why this church is here. Sometimes we've got to change up our methods to be effective fishermen. There's something else we've got to do. If I'm going to catch a fish, I've got to cast it out, my bait out. And I've got to reel it back in. I've got some work to do. If I've got that fishing pole sitting on the bank beside me, it ain't going to catch no fish. I've got to throw it out after I've figured out where the fish are, after I've analyzed the environment, after I've made sure I got the right bait to meet the needs of the fish, I know what they like, know what they eat, then I got to go where they are with my reel, my rod and reel, right? To get the bait to them. We've got to cast out the word of God to the people in this community, to the environment around this church, to the people that are in need. Whatever we're using, to reach them. Whatever food there is, whatever lure we're using to attract, we've got to give them what they need, the Word of God. Or else we're just doing social things. When you go fishing, it's also important that you get the timing right. I know when I used to fish a lot growing up, we'd like to go early in the morning because that's when them big fish was out. They ain't hungry, they ain't nothing all night. You can catch more. They'd be jumping and you'd see them topping the water. Late in the evening, same thing. Timing's important. We would agree with that spiritually. I need to be praying and God show me the timing when I go speak with Miss Hazel to share the gospel with her. If the time ain't right, I shouldn't expect to catch no fish. Remember as we looked at Mark, Jesus said, I will make you become fishers of men. So Jesus brings about change within us where we can evaluate the environment. Where we can look at what kind of bait we need to be using. So we can make sure that we're casting in the right direction so that we are multiplying and catching fish. How does multiplication work? Let's have a biology lesson. I got a biology degree. You got the male reproductive cell and you got the female reproductive cell. Those two cells come together within the womb 
God creates life. Those cells divide into multiple cells. They divide into more and more and more. And then we end up with a beautiful baby born. Multiplication. That's the way it's supposed to work. It's like the church is the womb. We're to go out and meet <laughs> with someone else. Just as the male cell meets with the female cell. And we're to bring about change by pointing them towards Jesus Christ. And then you know what? As those two cells disciple one another then, they start to multiply. Come into other people, other cells. And then you have this living, breathing, spiritual organism that is being grown out of the church. We're to multiply. We're to be fishers of men. We're to produce fruit. All these things. Same way of saying the same thing. We're to make disciples of others by being disciples ourselves. And I was meeting with the deacons today and we are starting to pray and seek ways that we can effectively do this as church. And I, I hope, I pray, that each and every person here will do the same thing. How, how can Miss Rodella, how can Miss Michelle, how can Miss Sarah, how can Miss Martha, how can Eddie individually, effectively become a fisher of men? How, what, what's got to take place within us, within our hearts? What have we got to surrender to the Holy Spirit to allow Jesus Christ to make us become fishers of men? And the answer is going to be a little different for each one of us. And the way we go fishing is going to be a little different. I'm, who likes catfish? I can't stand them. I don't want to go catfishing. That's probably what you want to go fish for. So, oh, you don't like to catch them? I like to eat them. Make Willie clean them for you if you catch them. Oh, he don't know how to <laughs> She's telling on you. <laughs> you like to go to David's catfish house. <laughs> but you see, Miss Deborah, she's got a preference for catfish. I don't really like fish, so I can't really say what my preference is. I like shrimp. Okay. But God has given Miss Deborah and made her unique where she can interact and enjoy being in that catfish company well I can't so what she's fishing for is going to look a little different from what I'm fishing for right because God's given us different impressions different likes different desires however you want to think about it so the fish she after is going to be different than the fish I'm after so therefore the way she's fishing is going to be different from the way I'm fishing the bait she's using is going to look different than the bait I'm using. When we're talking about individually making disciples. And then when we talk about corporately coming together to make disciples, you better believe that God has put this church on this hill in this community right beside 231 and he has a plan and a way for us collectively to be successful fishers of men together. I'll close this in prayer and we'll be headed into the business meeting. Hey, and we still got 10 minutes left. We did pretty good. You'll bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for allowing us to be here assembled together in your house. Lord, we just ask that, Lord, you go with us during this time of business that's about to come up. Father, that everything that is said and done is pleasing to you and in accordance with your will. Father, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your love, for your mercy, for your grace that you extend to us freely. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, we're going to take two or three minutes. Um, if anybody needs to move around, anybody needs to go, doesn't want to stay for the business meeting, go to the bathrooms. They're going to start passing out reports, okay? <laughs> <laughs>